This video is made possible by Practical Defense Systems, the best online security training at the lowest prices. You can start your security career today online at pdsclasses.com. Check them out. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for all of your support of Gun Guy TV. You have no idea how grateful I am for all of that. I just got done with my morning hike. Uh, today I went up and down uh, Cowles Mountain, tried to knock it out in an hour and 17 minutes, which uh, isn't too bad, so that was, was pretty good for an old guy. <laughs> in any case, I wanted to chat with you briefly about something that came up in a video I did the other day, or I should say in the comments to the video that I did the other day. Um, a couple of days ago, I don't know my shades are running somewhere, a couple of days ago I interviewed Sean uh, Maloney from Second Call Defense. He's an attorney who has about 30 years as a defense attorney, so he's got a lot of experience. And in the comments, what came up was the idea of using a warning shot when defending yourself to frighten the bad guy away. So that brought up two things I want to address. One, I want to address warning shots and the whole idea of that while I'm on my way back to, to the house. And the other is the idea of training. So first, warning shots. Um, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, never, ever, ever fire a warning shot. And there are some very valid reasons for that, not least of which is the fact that uh, it endangers the public. What goes up must come down. So if you fire a warning shot into the air, it's going to come down somewhere. And if you think that that doesn't injure people, you're wrong. In the United States, every year people are injured or killed because of celebratory fire when people shoot into the air during New Year's Eve or the Fourth of July. And in other countries, particularly in the Middle East, it happens quite often. In fact, here's a, a news story that's very current from uh, the Middle East where the Taliban were celebrating their victory, if you want to call it that. And you can see right there on the, on the head, headline how many people were killed, a number of people wounded because the bullets come back down again. Likewise, in 2020, this woman was killed in Texas when somebody fired into the air. And uh, way back in 2015, I think it was, this man was killed in Houston because somebody was shooting into the air. Those are just three I pulled off the web with, a one, with one simple web search. There are dozens and dozens and dozens more. In fact, I could tell you the story of my father being shot that way when I was a little boy. My grandparents lived in Long Beach and Belmont Shore, Long Beach, California. My dad was walking me to my favorite ice cream parlor when a little boy about a mile and a half, two miles away, was shooting at birds with a 22, the round went up and came down and hit my dad near the small of his back, right over his right hip, uh, and lodged next to his spine. So they never removed it. This was the early 60s, and they didn't have the technology to remove it. I was about five or six years old at the time. But I was standing right next to him on his right side, and the bullet hit him just about head high for me. So it had it been about six to eight inches or maybe a foot to the right, would have hit me in the head or neck and killed me. So what goes up does come down. Now you can say, well, yeah, but I'll fire down. Okay, well, if you're in a metropolitan area or a suburban area or anywhere where there's a lot of concrete or asphalt or whatever, that round is going to ricochet off the ground and head down range and injure potentially somebody or destroy property or whatever. So don't fire warning shots. I remind you that you are responsible for every round you fire from the moment it leaves the muzzle of the gun until it stops and any damage it does along the way. So warning shots are a no-go. Don't do it. If you're feeling threatened, either shoot the bad guy or don't. And if you're not going to shoot the bad guy, don't shoot. All right, so that covers the warning shot issue. The second thing would be training. We have a lot of new gun owners and a lot of uh, now, and, and I think that's marvelous, and a lot of folks who are now just starting to carry guns where they didn't carry guns before, and that's marvelous as well. The more honest, law-abiding, armed people there are in the country, the happier that I feel, quite frankly. So I'm grateful for the fact that that's happening. However, what that does mean is there's a lot of folks out there who don't have much in the way of training. And frankly, there's some older gun owners that don't have much in the way of training either. So I do urge you to get some training. One of the first things you would learn in that training probably is don't fire warning shots. So I'm gonna give you some places where you can get great training, won't cost you a fortune, and then I'll give you some more expensive ones in case you'd like to go that far. But the first thing I wanna encourage you is not to do, I'm gonna give you the don't first, and then I'm gonna give you the do, I hope you don't mind. Don't rely on Hollywood to teach you about firearms any more than you would rely on Hollywood 
Hollywood to teach you how to drive or how to be a doctor. You wouldn't watch a, uh, a, a hospital movie or a hospital-based TV show and then feel that you were qualified to go, com go practice brain surgery or heart surgery. You wouldn't watch Fast and Furious and other movies where they drive uh, race cars very fast or, or drive very fast for chase scenes and then let that teach you how to drive on the highway or how to drive on the city streets. You wouldn't uh, watch a video game and expect that the video game is going to teach you how to do either of those things either. Either That's all the entertainment industry. It's called the entertainment industry for a reason. It's meant to entertain you. And so they do things that are very, very unsafe in the entertainment industry because they're exciting and they're fun and they're meant to entertain. They're not meant to educate. So don't mix and conflate uh, entertainment with education. It's not. And it's a good idea for you not to look at it that way. So that's what not to do. Likewise, I would not, cons I would not get your education from YouTube University or Social Media University. Because anybody with a microphone and a, and a GoPro or a cell phone can make a video. You should vet the people first before you trust what they say, and that includes me. If you want to know more about me, you can look me up and you can search the web about me. You can, you'll find out all kinds of things about me if that's what you wish to do. But the point is you want to make sure that the person being te that, that's teaching you things actually knows what they're talking about. And when you're doing social media or YouTube or whatever, you have no idea what the history of that person is other than what they tell you. So I would not trust that. So here's where you can go get training that is going to be good, strong, positive, uh, professional training for you. I know people are upset with the NRA right now because of political things and because of, you know, mismanagement of funds. I am too. But one thing NRA has done very, very well for a long, long, long time is teach people about how to shoot or how to defend themselves and so on. So here's an inexpensive way to take some great classes. NRA has some wonderful classes on defense with a firearm. One of them is called personal protection inside the home. I know I'm an NRA law enforcement certified instructor, and I'm also certified to teach that class. It's an excellent class. I advise you to take it. Then there's one for outside the home called personal protection outside the home. That's beyond the, the first class takes you out of the house. How would you defend yourself in public? That's also an outstanding course, and it's an NRA course. And then there's likewise, there's a concealed carry course that the NRA has developed. And what I would do, if it were me, is I would go find an NRA instructor near you who's certified by NRA to teach those courses, because those courses have to be taught to NRA standards. So you know you're going to get taught in a way that is going to be helpful for you. Now, if you want to go beyond that, I would advise that you go to one of the, uh, the premier schools for, for learning to shoot. Gunsight Ranch comes to mind, Thunder Ranch. Uh, if you're close to Las Vegas, Front Sight out there in Pahrump. Those are all outstanding places to learn to shoot. They're, they're more expensive, obviously, and you've got to travel, and so that's why a lot of folks won't do it. But there are NRA instructors across the country, thousands and thousands of them. Now, not all of them are like me. Not all of them are NRA law enforcement instructors. You have to be involved in you know, public or private law enforcement to get certified to do that. But that doesn't matter. You're just looking for an NRA civilian instructor who's certified to teach the classes I just mentioned to you. Now, it may be that there is a prerequisite for that. It might be that you have to complete the NRA basic pistol course first. That's fine. Every little bit of training you get is going to be very helpful to you. I think the last thing I would leave you with is this, and that is that not knowing is okay. Some people feel like they were, you know, they were supposed to be born genetically able to shoot and defend themselves, and that's nonsense. I, you know, I'm a Filipino martial arts practitioner, and I can tell you before I started studying martial arts 20-some-odd years ago, I couldn't uh, punch my way outside of a paper bag. And so it's not a matter of being immediately out of the womb able to do things. You have to be trained and taught how to do them. And if you haven't been trained and taught how to defend yourself with a firearm or even how to operate one safely, then I urge you to go get that training. I'm not an advocate of the law forcing you to get training because I don't think you should have a legal requirement to exercise a, a constitutionally perfect, protected right. That said, if you're a gun owner and you're going to have that gun for self-defense or home defense or you're going to carry that gun, I think it's irresponsible 
not to have the appropriate training. So I urge you, get that training, get it as soon as possible, and then you'll learn things like don't shoot warning shots, okay? All right, well, anyway, that was it. Have a wonderful day. I got to get myself back in the house and, uh, and get to work. I hope you have a terrific week, and wherever you go, whatever you do, stay safe.